What's up, everybody? It's the Welcome to the Show podcast brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show to get a free audiobook download and a 30 day free trial. That's audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show. One more thing. The Welcome to the Show podcast is also powered by Hims CT. We have a new affiliate. Can you believe oh. that? Yeah. So to get a deal for Hims, which is basically if you're balding, like I think I am, people, some people don't think I am. <laughs> Hims has a good subscription service. They provide biotin vitamins. You get prescription medication and you get this drop that you put in the back of your head to help your, your hair regrow. Um, I haven't seen any regrowth, probably because I'm not losing. I'm not missing any. Uh, but just go to WTTSPod.com forward slash save and click on the banner under hymns. That's WTTSPod.com forward slash save. CT, I can't believe I just told the world that I think that I'm balding. But you know what? What are you going to do? Um, I mean, hey, it's all right, man. <laughs> you know, it happens. Life comes at you fast. But, you know, I think you would look very well Distinguished. With- with a bald head so I, I i feel like i have a large head um <laughs> and i think that me being bald would be very weird but uh thank you thanks for those words man it'll just it'll take some getting used to i'll admit that <laughs> but right. i think you'll be all right <laughs> so <laughs> so later on the show we're going to talk to alfred alvarez he's uh the founder of con la bases llenas he's also a host uh, on espn 990 down in miami um we're also going to talk about mlb's power rankings what's going on with the red sox some yankee baseball the pirates and the reds got into a brawl and some dallas keiko stuff so let's start with the power ranking ct i need to get your reaction on this so major league baseball just released their power rankings today and in their top five they have the dodgers at one followed by the phillies the astros the the brewers and the rays um, the the Yanks and the Red Sox don't come in until six and seven, followed by the Mets, Cards, and Nats. Do you feel like that's a fair power ranking for Week Two of baseball? Um, is there a team that you think is is ranked too high? A team that's ranked too low? What's your reaction? Man? I don't have a problem with the Dodgers and the Phillies. The Dodgers are on some other shit right now. Sorry for cursing so early into the show. My bad. Steroids. But they're hitting they. I think they have a home run in every game, and they're just slugging their way. They're beating everybody up. Cody Bellinger's on fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Phillies are amazing, too. Uh, the Astros, I'm okay with the Astros at third. Brewers at fourth, I'm good with that. The Rays, I'm good with that. I don't know about the Yankees and the Sox. But then again, the Yankees kind of turned it around this last these last couple of games because they've hit so many home runs, and they won their games. So I'm good with the Yanks. The Sox probably shouldn't be up there yet. Uh, the Mets... Probably should be ahead of the Sox. And I think the Mariners should be there instead of the, uh, I don't know, take your pick, Nats cards. Because, like, the Mariners are a pretty solid team so far to start the season. But I'm pretty sure there's some metric out there you're about to hit me with that says otherwise. No, I mean, I don't I don't know what, you know, what MLB – bases their stats on but the mariners have the highest run differential so if you're going to use like the dorkiest yeah. team stat they have the highest one they're also hitting so many home runs you know i can't remember what t- what team it was last year that was raking to start the year for a few maybe a, f- a few weeks maybe a month and i kept saying maybe it was the mariners it was the mariners last year and i said this isn't this isn't the real man the real mariners team i'm going to repeat that phrase now this is not the real mariners they're not, not they're not a nine and two team Plus twenty nine run differential. They're just not that good. They traded away all of their good players. Um, they're in a rebuild. I think this is kind of fluky, to be honest with you. And they're, I mean, they're hitting so. It doesn't even make sense the amount of home runs that they're hitting. Um, well, I mean, yeah. let me just say that these home runs aren't just any regular home runs. Like Tim Beckham has hit some pretty, you know, decent home runs. Pimp somewhere. You, t- pimps you give me Tim Beckham, I give you. Uh, Eric Thames a couple years ago is that his name? Eric Thames. Eric Thames. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, yeah, it's but gonna Thames, it's gonna drop off eventually. Yeah, but Eric Thames is a legit home run hitter though. So if you're if you're telling me Tim Beckham is the next Eric Thames, I'll take it. Mm, really? Have you looked at Have you looked at Thames? No, he, ten, he's, uh, he's, Thames' stats. He, yeah, he's platooning right now. He's not even like the starting first baseman. Where I get it, but I'm mm-hmm. just saying, he's 
he's a good home run hitter. He's a home run hitter. Like, yeah, no, I I got you. I so I'm with you. I would put the Mariners up there in the top ten. I think long run, eventually, we're gonna see a drop off on that team. There, I just don't. If they win that division, that's gonna be Crazy. it'll be it'll be considered like a miracle, like a miracle yeah, well, season. But that's the thing that these power rankings, right? They're clear. They're clearly. Uh, based off the first two, just what we've seen so far, because why would you put the Rays, if it's not based off that, then why would you put the Rays or the Brewers above the Yankees and the Red Sox if we're just going off what these teams are supposed to be? I still think the, yeah. you know, full potential team is better than the Brewers. Even I'd probably even put them over the Astros, even Philly. I'm talking about the Red Sox and the Yankees. Yeah. So they're not. So this has to be based off what we've seen so far. If it's, if it's, what, if it's based off what we've seen so far, then why aren't the Mariners up there? You know? Right. Yeah, I'm with you. And as far as the Rays go, I'm happy with them being in the top five. I think that they've, they're have they playing like the best team in the American League. I think that they're they're innovative as hell, man. They're they're not afraid to try anything. Did you did you see this past weekend how they put in a reliever? I think it was in the eighth inning and uh, to, to I don't even know how this works. I can't tell you how the rule works or whatever, but cash ended up. Uh, he let the reliever throw to one batter. Then he rotated the reliever to first base to against the like a, a, for the next hitter, and then he put him back into the rotation, which I didn't even know was possible to do that. Yeah, because you could you could swap out any player, any any player on the field, you could swap them out if you wanted to. You could make that pitcher a catcher if you wanted to. So basically, he swaps them out, puts them in the in a position where he's probably. Not going to make an impact. Like, if it's a lefty, he probably put him in left field, you know, or yeah. something, vice versa. And Which then, Joe Madden did a couple years ago, too, with, with one of his players. He put him out in the outfield. Yeah, and then that way you don't have to – because, you know, once he takes him out, he's out he's out for good. So just bring him right back in. So it's – it's a, it's, I've, seen, I've seen it done a couple times, but, uh, yeah. I think the Rays are, are legit. Still don't think they're winning the, the division. They're just not uh, afraid to try anything, man. They're they're down to try whatever, and and their use of the opener is a regular thing now. That's their fifth starter is is Ryan Stanek, goes one or two innings and then he hands it off to the rest of the the team. Uh, yeah. This guy Yanni Chirinos is is he looks like the real deal. Um, Glass now has been pitching really good. Um, who's the other guy that they have on their on their rotation? They just look like a legit team. I think you know Kiermaier had a t- horrible year last year. He's stepping it up a little bit this year. They got Tommy Pham on that team. They have a they have a pretty good team, and they have the lowest no, Tom- payroll in Major League Baseball. Yeah, that's crazy. And Tommy Pham is legit. Like he's, I think he's currently on forty something game, forty plus games, getting on base, dating back yeah. to last year. So since yeah, he started with the Rays, he he was, yeah. he was on fire. Yep, he's legit. Crazy man. Not um, to mention, and then yeah, go oh, ahead. no, go ahead. I was, I was gonna, gonna say. <laughs> Not, uh, not gonna edit that out. I was gonna, I was right gonna say it. Jose Al, <laughs> their their relief pitcher, throws yeah. like a hundred with move, yeah. movement. This dude that they traded, uh, uh, Yandy Diaz, that they traded uh, in that three way deal. He's he's good. You know, yeah, like he's, they he's good. But they have uh, yeah, a beast team. Rays, man. I don't have the Rays winning the division still, man. I I would I'm I'm gonna believe it like this. I wouldn't be surprised, but I I agree with you. I wouldn't be surprised, but I agree. I don't, I don't think those ninety wins were a fluke. Let me put yeah. it that way. Um, and then you had mentioned the Houston Astros. I So this is my beef with the Houston Astros being in the top five. After this weekend, these, these power rankings came out today. So I'm assuming that they're taking into account what occurred this past weekend. The New York Yankees have a higher win percentage than the Houston Astros. And if you want to use a dorky stat, they also have a higher run differential. So mm-hmm. why, are the, why are the Houston Astros in the top five? They're... they're uh, not to mention they, they they lost I think they lost that series to the Rays to open up the se- the season. Yeah, they're they're listed as top three actually, and the yeah. Yankees are didn't even crack the top five. That doesn't make sense to me. It's just I think it's just a popularity thing, man. The Astros yeah. are still like that, you know, hip team with the young guys, and Alex Bregman is like calling out Trevor yep. Bauer and stuff, and uh, Josh Reddick is like. Still hitting home runs, I guess, or whatever. I don't know, man. I think it's just a popularity thing. I I really kind of hate MLB power rankings. Mm-hmm. I hate power rank. I hate any lists in general that aren't like I I don't mind the home run home run leader list because that's that's fact. Who's leading the league in home runs? But these right, things right. that are kind of like formulated and they're trying like speculative. 
yeah, like trying to make me think that the Dodgers are the best team when I just can watch and see for myself, you know? So I kind of hate those lists to begin with. So, yeah. What ups? Uh, what ups, dog? Speaking of teams that are in the on the power rankings, let's talk about the Red Sox real quick, CT, because I'm not sure if you're hitting the panic button yet, but the Red Sox pitching is atrocious. I want to give you some numbers real quick. Um, <laughs> you hear my post-it? You hear that paper? Yep. All right. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. I don't have my glasses, so it's going to be real close to my face. Okay. Red Sox starting pitching, entering today, are 0-7 with an 8.57 ERA. They have given up 16 home runs, 26 walks, and they have a whip of 1.86. So let me tell you where those rank. The 0-7 record is worst in Major League Baseball among starting pitching. The ERA of 8.57 worst in Major League Major League Baseball among starting pitching. They've given up the most home runs in baseball. They've walked the most batters in baseball, and they have the second to worst whip in baseball. Um, Every win that this team has, their three and eight currently, has come through a relief pitcher coming in to save the day. And this guy Brazier has been really good. Um, are you worried yet, man? No, I'm gonna tell you why I'm not worried. They're they're at an extremely bad point right now, where the whole starting pitching staff is doing bad together. We know that they're not this bad, so. Yeah. This is the worst. This is it. This is as bad as it's going to get for us. It's clearly, to me, <laughs> correlated to the lack of uh, spring training that they had as a, as a team. Chris Sale isn't really, you know, um, he his velocity isn't there. All the pitchers are missing their spots. I feel like they're still just trying to feel everything out. I'm not worried about it. It's only, you know, it's only the second week of baseball. Um, and I'm also not worried because our – offense even though we're not outscoring teams obviously because we're not winning games but we're not we're not like a stagnant offense like Mm -hmm. we we get it done on the base pass we're still making contact you know jd martinez is still a beast mookie is still a beast so i'm not worried about it and uh, also our it's like you said our relief pitcher comes in to save the day what we thought was our biggest weakness hasn't really been much of a weakness and barnes has been solid so Mm -hmm. yeah i'm not worried and I also, think, and also, no, yeah, no. Now that I now that I said that, we won the World Series last year, so that I'm gonna end it with that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Sorry, that was overboard. That was overboard. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Yankees lost. So the Yankees lost four games to the Orioles and the Tigers, which I don't understand how you know Ouch. you're gonna lose to those teams, whatever. But yeah, why am why am why am I bringing that up? Because I think that if the Yankees had won the games, they were. I mean, had they started the season nine and zero, would have been out out of this world. That's that's not realistic either. But maybe. If the Yankees were seven and two or something instead of five and four entering this Houston series, um, I think I'm not going to write the Red Sox off clearly because they're they're too good of a team. But I would say that your chances, even though it's only two weeks in, would have been completely diminished. Not completely diminished, mostly diminished. But since the Yankees sucked as well, you're still in the you're still in it. You're only three games behind, two weeks into the season. Like I said, that's nothing in the grand scheme of things. So. The, the Red Sox are very much alive. And it's like like I said about the Seattle Mariners, how this isn't the real Seattle Mariners. This isn't the real Red Sox. There's going to be a correction. Somewhere down the line, the Red Sox are going to rattle off like 15 straight wins. And this shit is going to, you know, yeah, and- you know, the, the earth will continue tilting on its axis or whatever, spinning on its axis, whatever the phrase is. Yeah, and that's another thing, too. I mean, I'm not, I'm not making excuses, but we, we did. And I'm not making excuses. I'm going to repeat that again. All right. But, Can you say it one you more know, time, please? Not making excuses, but clearly the Astro- the Mariners took steroids before they started the season, and they 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 <laughs> oh, rolled that they rolled that hot wave. Say. We ran into them with the hot wave, so I'm like I'm I'm using this as a positive. I'm saying like it's not like we're and you know had the Yankees lost a series to the Orioles this past weekend, then I would have thrown that in your face. But you guys got it. You guys took care of business against the Orioles over the weekend. Like you guys went overboard with the home run. So congratulations. Show did. And we're but I'm talk talking. About, we're yeah. gonna talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but just, but here's another here's another question, real quick. And and at the beginning of the year, I had said that starting off on the West Coast was gonna benefit you guys because you're not gonna have to deal with delays or any of that shit. 
the Yankees didn't have to deal with any delays in that time. Period. Maybe one game was delayed, but no game was postponed. Yeah. Um, you're starting your opening day. Is it tonight? Opening day tonight, Monday night. Yeah, yeah. I think tonight. Yeah, tonight's tonight. No, so, no. To, uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So is this like two weeks into the season? Now is opening day for the Boston Red Sox. Exactly. That seems yeah, a little like, crazy. Yeah, and that, and that. Thank thank you for bringing that up because it I the, it it occurred to me like a couple of days ago and I haven't really been thinking about it. But yeah, like what the hell, man? Like we're the defending champs and we have to open. You know, we have to pretty much have our opening day like two weeks in man like that's it's not good for us because we clearly suck these last couple of you know Mm -hmm. these last these last games but i really do feel like if we had an opening series it might have been a little different even if we could have just won that first game you know maybe like on the momentum and shit but it's like i said i'm the positives i could take away is that we played a mariners team that's playing good right now and we also played against the oakland a's which if we're to believe anything from last season going into the season, how they started as well. I know they lost the two games to the Mariners, but they still, they've been winning their games. You know, we, we've played two good teams. I'm not going to say Arizona because Arizona's not supposed to be a good team this year. Like, but it's still Arizona. We played them in Arizona, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah, man, I'm not worried. Okay. Well, on tomorrow, Tuesday, you're listening to this today. The Red Sox are going to have the ring ceremony and Craig Kimbrell will not attend it. What are your feelings on that, man? Uh, I really think that he I I would have attended if it were me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's like a underlying issue between him and the front office of why he didn't want to go, but I think the fans deserve it for him to be there. Um, he was with the Red Sox for multiple multiple years, not just last year. He pitched great for us. So if it were me, I would go. I mean, how often do you get to go to a ring ceremony? for something you were a part of, you know? Um, And also, who knows? Maybe that gets the ball rolling and and him making an appearance on TV, you know? Maybe someone signs him. I don't know. Like, I would have gone. It's crazy, man. So so according to 985, the sports hub, I guess that's from Boston, um, Kimbrell and Red Sox president Sam Kennedy talked, and and Kimbrell's people, uh, this is what Kennedy had to say. He said, while he appreciated our invite and outreach, he feels his attendance might create a distraction. Out of respect for his teammates, he has chosen not to attend. While disappointed, while, while disappointed, we totally respect and understand his decision. So it sounds like the Red Sox extended an invitation and Kimbrell said no because he didn't want to cause a distraction. Yeah. I say, fuck it. Bring on the drama, yeah. man. <laughs> Just go, man. Just And I... And- I feel like you're letting your teammates down by not going because, like, yeah. now now you did make now you've made it an issue. Now it's well, like, whoa, like he didn't want to come. Like, what does that right. mean? You know. Mm-hmm. I, I and know. now, and now, it, I, I, to me, this means he's not going to be a Red Sox at all. Like, even if his price drops, to me, that sounds like that's it. The relationship between him and the Red Sox is officially over. It may not have ended in, on bad terms, but that's it. There, you know, there's no chance that he's going to come back. If he does, it's going to be. I think. It, I think it'll be weird at this point. Yeah. Um. Oh. Quick. Real. Real quick. Uh, Justin Verlander bases loaded in the third inning, one out to Luke Voigt. I'm hoping Luke Voigt strikes out or grounds into a double play because I'm facing a guy in fantasy this week who <laughs> has him, who has him on the roster. So. And I have another development, CT. As that happened. My MLB TV app froze. I got a Fire Stick to put on a TV that's next to my desk, and it froze. So okay. I can't watch what's happening. That's that's my latest. I'll let you know what happens to my TV as this uh, story develops. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so let's stick with the Red Sox real quick. So this weekend, uh, David Price spoke to Mass Live, and he basically said that uh, that it's a joke that the Boston Red Sox star Mookie Betts, who's to me, he's Mike Trout's, you know, Mike Trout 2.0, the second best player in baseball. Um, that, you know, he's not, he would represent African American players in baseball, and he's not being given the chance to, or not being given the chance to, but rather he's not being promoted like Mike Trout and other players are. Um, so this is his exact quote. He said, um, I saw the Brewers' first baseman Jesus Aguilar has a commercial on MLB Network. Great player, great player. I lo- I love watching him play. I've heard nothing but great things about him from Travis Shaw and all those guys. But he's not Mookie Betts. We're trying to grow this game in the African American community. 
Put that guy bets on commercials. That's how this game grows. MLB is probably the worst at marketing their players. They need to do a better job at that. We talked, we've talked about that to the union and Rob Manfred many times. And then at one point in the article, he, uh, the writer points out that he shouted over to Mookie. Yo, Mookie, are you, are you, have you gotten any commercials yet? And Mookie shouted back, nope. So it seems like it's a, it's an issue, a issue that's been um, buried for a while now. And I guess David Price has taken the opportunity to, to put it out there in the open. And I have to say that um, baseball, I wrote a piece on this this weekend on Call to the Pen. Baseball's diversity is not a problem. Baseball is very diverse. We have There's a lot of Latino players, there's Asian players, and there are African-American players. But um, the, Afri- the percentage of African-American players from the latest data that I could find on, in 2016 from baseball perspectives, uh, the percentage of baseball players of African-American descent in Major League Baseball is equal to that of the percentage of, of players of African-American descent in baseball in 1957. Um, to me, that's a problem. And and I kind of agree. I, I tried to look back and see if I could remember a commercial with Andrew McCutcheon or Chris Archer or um, any of these guys, and I can't think of one. I could think of a lot of Latino, Latin-born players, like, you know, but I can't really think of, a, of, of an African-American player. Well, I have, like, a couple different takes on this. One thing is that, before that let the kids play commercial what was the last mob commercial that you remember seeing where you were like oh like here we go like these are some commercials when was the last time that because there's those corny commercials on mlb network and stuff but nothing the let the kids play commercials are probably the biggest like international yeah the let the kids play commercial to me was one of the first times that i ever saw the biggest stars on of the game in the same place at the same time that wasn't like the all-star game So Mm -hmm. that to me was like the first time that I saw an effort to market players from MLB, I guess, because I watch the Yes Network and there's a bunch of commercials with the Yankee players, you know, for Yes Network. So I'm assuming there's something going on for other channels as well. But in that in that uh, commercial for and I agree, I don't know why Mookie Betts wasn't in that commercial. I said that before he should have been in that commercial. But I didn't I didn't think not for one second that I think. Mookie Betts should be in this commercial because he's a back black player. I just thought yeah, Mookie yeah. Betts should be in this commercial because they literally have the top ten players in the league, uh, maybe minus Paul Goldschmidt, which I don't know, you know, maybe because he's a little bit, he's not considered a kid or anything. Right. But you got you got a young player that's one of the best players in the league. But not for one second did I think that there was a mis misrepresentation of black people in MLB because I never looked at the game that way. And also, if we're talking about the race of of African. There are African races represented in that commercial. The, you know, you have you have I consider Vlad Jr. of African race. That's he's black for a reason, you know, like Yeah, yeah. Um, they're Afro they're Afro they're Afro Latinos. I yeah, guess and, he's talking about African Americans. Like like all right, but, black black guys born in America, you know, of African American descent. Like David Price's, you know what I mean? Like the right, the numbers but, don't lie. As of twenty sixteen, five point seven percent. That's really low, man. Yeah, but okay, but can we can we also take into the fact that that can we honestly think that uh, African descents are are lacing up their cleats to go play baseball? Or are they lacing up their sneakers to go play basketball and football? Yeah. The stuff the stuff that brings you know the the glory as 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 a kid, you're a superstar if you choose that path versus going the baseball path, you know. Right, um, but where did where did it change? Because there was a point where Frank Thomas was was the face of baseball. Ken Griffey Jr., you know Barry Bonds. You could rattle off. You could rattle off Maybe. five, ten, fifteen players of African American descent. And now I can't. I could barely name five. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I agree with you. There's there's less. But besides Mookie Betts, I mean, who else? is in that category and if we're talking about just african-american descent besides mookie betts who else is in that category for superstar like the superstar status is that is that mob's fault that i mean i I doubt i doubt that there's an african-american phenom in the minor leagues that's being held back because he's african-american i highly doubt that Mm -hmm. because we have we have all types yeah 
So I agree with you. I think I think the issue is that you do have Mookie Betts, who's you know happens to be black and he happens to be, you know, A and B top, you know, with Mike Trout, best player in baseball. And if I were Major League Baseball and I see my demographics and I see that I have a really small amount of African American players, they're all going to the NFL, to the NBA, um, and doing other stuff. Um, I would I would put Mookie Betts in front of commercials as much as possible because. Yeah, okay. It's but... good for the sport. That that's an entire population of people that could be watching games, but they don't see themselves represented right. on the screen. You know what I, I mean? Get, I get, man. Yeah, I t- and I completely agree with you. I think they did. I think they should put Mookie Betts in front of TV. But what other players are they putting in front of TV? Where, right. Where, I, where, like, I don't think it's an African American problem. I think it's a Major League Baseball problem in general. You right. never see Aaron Judge on 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 uh, commercials before the Let the Kids Play. Yeah. Trout, I saw the Let the Kids Play commercial. The other day I saw the weirdest commercial with him and Andrew Luck from the Colts doing a disco dance for I, uh, seen that I don't know if it was I don't know if it was Powerade or what. But the only other times I could think of commercials was there was a and I I love these two commercials to death because it involves two of my favorite baseball players, but there was a commercial with Alex Rodriguez and Vladimir Guerrero from like 2003 right mm-hmm. when he became a Yankee and they're hitting home runs to you know they're they're uh soft tossing balls to each other hitting home runs battling for a Pepsi that was a Pepsi commercial mm-hmm. then there was another commercial with Ryan Howard and Vladimir Guerrero it was a State Farm commercial but besides those two and the Let the Kids Play commercial which mind you the last year's Let the Kids Play starred Ken Griffey Jr who was probably who's probably the biggest Second, whatever, one of the biggest African American baseball players ever. But yeah. besides those, like, what, what, com- what, what misrepresentation am I missing? Where, where is Mookie Betts being left out of that I'm missing? Because I watch a lot of yeah, baseball, yeah. and I honestly cannot, sh- I cannot find the catalog of commercials like you see Steph Curry and all these other NBA players in, or or anything, you know. And yeah. usually, the and usually these commercials aren't NBA. Uh, you know, it's not the NBA doing the commercial. It's Gatorade. It's Nike. It's right. You know, so I don't. I don't know. I, I'm. I don't. I don't entirely. Ag- I think there is a, a lack of representation of baseball in general, not African American baseball players. I just don't think there's yeah. African American talent like there used to be, and that's yeah. And and I to be honest, I blame baseball for it because yeah. well, let me put it this way. Um, like what came what came first, the chicken or the egg? Right? Like, is is the problem? with baseball that there aren't enough players to promote because African American players aren't playing the game or are African American players not playing the game because they're not seeing themselves represented on the screen. So that's my first point. The second point is um you when when David Price said in there and he asked Mookie Betts, have you been given a commercial yet? I agree. Like all the sponsors and stuff should be all on top of Mookie Betts right now because he's super marketable super likable but the only time you hear about this guy is if he's in a bowling tournament you know and the whole thing behind that is i know that i sound like one of these crazy people crazy liberal people that 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 always find an issue with something but the reason why everybody's surprised by that let's be honest is because oh my god a black guy bowling and he's super good at it plus he plays baseball this is weird the next thing he has to do is play hockey you know what i'm saying um fucking like yeah, maybe we should be calling for brands to to sponsor this guy and put him up on there because he's good for baseball. And the other point that that uh, that uh, David Price made is that MLB is probably the worst at marketing their players in general. And I totally agree with that a hundred percent. They're just not good at it, man. And and I don't know what it's gonna take. Maybe this could be A Rod's calling. We've talked about A Rod's ideas a thousand times, but this is the problem with baseball, and this is why its popularity is going down. And I think that. Maybe the African American players are kind of like collateral damage. Like they're just, you know, they're just the forgotten ones because there's not enough of them or something. I don't know. I don't know. I like it's what came first, the chicken or the egg. In this case, I really think, and this is my opinion. I'm not saying there isn't racism in baseball. For all I know, baseball is probably the most racist sport ever, and I root for one of the most racist towns, according to recent incidents where fans are yelling these, you know racist remarks at players adam jones you know stuff like that 
Mm-hmm. I, 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 I'm not saying there's no racism in, in baseball or in the world or whatever. I'm just saying in this particular case where I've seen one commercial since, since I don't know when's the last time I saw a commercial. I didn't see one all last year besides the Ken Griffey Jr. one mm-hmm. of Let the Kids Play. This year's Let the Kids Play, besides Mookie Betts being left out. But mind you, they had Vlad Jr., who's black. He's he's Dominican, but he's black. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another player too, uh, Ronald, Ronald Acuna. Acuna. Ronald Acuna, black, and I don't. And that's the thing. I never, I never looked at it as like, where's, where's the African American representation in baseball? I know the African American base. It's, it's the same thing as every other race in baseball. If you're a superstar, you're gonna get noticed. If not, you're not. And last year, the only form of marketing that I could think of is social media. Last year, Mookie Betts headlined almost every other night in social media because he had an MVP season. So again, I don't I don't understand like I get it. It it exists. It's out there. It's a thing. But I really don't know why David Price just had to, you know, say this now, you know, and and why I think it's a reach is what I'm saying. The problem okay. is there's mis- misrepresentation of players in general. I don't think it's an African American thing. You didn't have to yell at me, man. Jesus. Nah, because you know, man, these <laughs> days everything's about race and everything and the season just started and the Red Sox suck, so I'm pissed. <laughs> that's, that's the perfect transition for some Yankee talk. I'm going to I'm gonna end that right there, CT, because you made some good points. I, I have nothing to say. You know what I mean? You got me. No, no. I, make your points. Make your points because I, I agree with what you said. It's just I also yes, think that. Same here. It, it's, a tough, it's, a, it's a tough situation and, because the sport just doesn't feature as many black players anymore. But then you, I guess my it, my thing is how do we improve that? And for me, the best way to improve it is to find your best players and market the shit out of those guys. Like if you have Mookie Betts, who's not who's more likable than Mookie Betts? Like the guy, you know, unlike Mike Trout, who I love Mike Trout, Mookie Betts actually has a personality. He's likable. Yeah. You know, he does shit on the field that that is incredible like Trout does, too. You know, he's not your prototypical power hitter. He's a small guy, but he can do it all like who you know he plays the game the right way like this is the this is the guy you want you know and uh, you know you want you want to see his at bats as much as possible you want to put him in commercials i want to see this guy more and more and more and more i yeah. guess that's my problem yeah i mean i i'd like to see more of him too but i'm i, I want to see him on the yankees too good for you i i, I think any fan mm-hmm. would want to see Mookie Betts on their team but again like I feel like we saw a lot of Mookie Betts last year you know and this whole thing about African Americans not seeing themselves represented because of commercials or maybe they're not seeing their guys on 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 TV they're not looking for them nobody's looking for baseball players unless you're a baseball player or a baseball fan they're all Mm -hmm. they're all looking at the highlights from basketball or football because they have an abundance of it. It's cool to play basketball. It's cool to to play football. And not just that, there's a college superstar level for those things. And also, if, 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 if you feel like you're not seeing anything, if you feel like you need to see something to, and I get it, because when I was a kid, I saw Sammy Sosa and these guys that, that made me want to play baseball as, as a Dominican descent. But it's 2019. Like, we have the internet. Like, you can find anything that you're looking for it's it's kind of like I don't know, man. I'm just throwing out random points at this at this point. You know, <laughs> I just feel like the excuse for not seeing, uh, not seeing what what you what 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 could inspire a kid. That excuse is starting to die out because of the internet. Like we have the internet yeah. that gives you access to everything. So and I think that yeah, I agree. I mean, me myself, I watch MLB Network in the mornings to watch a. Uh, like the recaps and stuff, and I might catch some shows throughout the day, but overall, when I'm watching baseball, I'm watching it on on MLB at bat online, and there's no commercials on that. So um, the only reason I know about this story is because I write and I need to, you know, keep up on the news. And I saw this and it drew my attention. Uh, but you're right. I think as as the generations, you know, keep growing and and the younger kids starts to take over. Things like this won't be an issue because people like you and me don't see color, basically. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it just takes time. I was just surprised when I saw the amount of, you know, like like you, I consider Afro-Latinos to be black, too. But a lot of people don't. You know what I mean? Like, we break down our demographics, and African-Americans are separate from Latinos. I don't know if you know this, but if you 
check i believe someone told me this don't uh quote me on this but if you check latino on your applications and stuff you'll get like the benefits of a person of color but i believe that in the demographics they consider you to be white you know what i'm saying which is crazy yes. um I don't because know. I there's just... because latinos are a mix where we're a mix of of african slaves our descendants are african slaves and europeans who you know fucked yeah. for lack of a better term and created yeah. us <laughs> yeah i don't know but if but if someone is is complaining about black people not being represented i mean yasiel puig is black man he's black yeah he's black he's black yeah and he and and they really tried to market him like they really he was doing ass not ass but he was never he never lived up to the hype of what he was supposed to be and there you'll still catch a yasiel puig highlight because he's he's one of those guys that you just put on tv and people will watch you know he's a character so, man yeah he's a character and i don't know i don't think maybe maybe i'm not maybe i'm not looking at it the right way but i think that the problem is baseball in general not it's not an african-american problem in this case not saying that that's not a problem in baseball it is <laughs> it probably is the, just this in this particular case it's to me it's not the problem it's it's the whole it's a bigger it's every player it's a, it's a bigger thing not just singly african-american descent or african-americans that's a perfect place to transition. So you brought up Yasiel Puig. Um, this weekend, uh, the Cincinnati Reds and the Pittsburgh Pirates got into a brawl after, what's this guy's name? Derek Dietrich, is that how you say his name? Yeah. He he hit a blast. So first of all, Dietrich isn't a power hitter. Like I think he's played like maybe ten years in baseball. Maybe has like sixty home runs, fifty something like that. And he pimped the shit out of this home run. And I'm not gonna lie, yeah. if I hit a ball a like that, I would pimp the shit out of it too. And yeah. Chris Archer didn't take it the right way. You know, he broke the code. You know, this old code that I, I can't stand in baseball. And the next time he came up, he he plunked him basically. And the bench is cleared after that. So I just have to say real quick, I have no issues with Derek Dietrich doing what he did. I know I so I've watched it over and over again. And every time you watch it, they, they cut to where the ball goes. So I didn't see how long he stood at the plate for. But it appears like he stood there and he admired the living crap out of that ball. <laughs> yeah. And I get that in old school baseball that pisses people off. But let the kids play, man. You know oh what my I mean? God. Listen, I. <laughs> I did watch. I did watch the version where uh, I didn't see where the ball. By the way, those the both home runs he hit were bombs. So kudos to uh, however you say his last name. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Some, I like know, his first but, name. It reminds me of somebody. What was it? I like his first name. It reminds me of somebody. Oh, okay. Derek. Derek. Yeah, let's call him Derek. Sure, because uh, <laughs> his name is Derek. Uh -huh. And I and I saw the I saw both home runs, they they were really nice hefty home runs, something to be proud of, and I saw both versions where you know they showed him and then they showed the, the where it landed, but then I saw the version where they showed what he did at the plate. They didn't even show the ball; they just showed his his whole you know his whole thing. And I'm just gonna say, well, this is my opinion, and a big part of me doesn't even care because I feel like every year we go through the same thing. There's that one controversial home run where it causes the benches to clear type of shit i'm i'm i move past it already i don't care people are going to argue yeah. about this for the rest <laughs> for the rest of our lives i really don't care at the end of the day but i can see why chris archer threw at him because he went i to me he just went a little overboard like he i i think at one point he's he's staring at the home run and then he kind of like cocks his head and squints a little bit like like he's in a dream or something and then, I mean, pr he probably did feel like he was in a dream. This guy's okay. probably never hit a home run like that before in his life. Okay, but can you wake up because uh, you know <laughs> you're you're in the major league baseball game? I think he just he, I'm talking about he stood in the batter's box for I think a good I'm gonna say eight seconds. I mean, eight. from what I see, he he cracks the he hits it, and it look it literally looks like he's they cut they cut to where the ball landed like two seconds later, and he wasn't even like trying to get out of that batter's box yet. yeah 
He wasn't even <laughs> trying to get out of the batter's box. Now, mind you, had he just – if I feel like he could have done that, admired the ball, and walked to first base, and it wouldn't have been that big of a deal. He stays in the batter's box. Uh, did we forget that MLB is trying to speed the games up and shit? Like, are we going to have a problem with them standing in the batter's box now or whatever? I don't know. That's another thing. But on top of all that, it takes him like 30 seconds to round the bases. <laughs> like, they, that's to me, that's just there's no excuse for that exaggeration. Like, flip the bat. Do whatever you want. Do the Excalibur. Like, you know, uh, <laughs> freaking carry the bat all the way to first and rock the, rock the guitar with it if you want. But that was just <laughs> unnecessary. Like, it was just unnecessary for him to be standing there for that long and then to take that long to round the bases. But, again, I don't really care <laughs> about any of this shit. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm good with it. So here's the stats on Derek Dietrich real quick. He has 61 home runs in seven big league seasons. So he averages less than 10 home runs per season. Um, you know, I don't I don't know. I'm trying to think of, like, if I was in the, in the dugout and I saw that, would it piss me off? I think it might piss me off. But then at the same token, I'm thinking, like, this is the I game now. We're, the, we're trying to change the game. Just let this shit go. You know what I mean? Listen, I think if it was, I realize I've been, I feel like I'm talking normal now. And I feel like I've been yelling the whole episode. So okay. <laughs> my my apologies if you're listening to this with some bad <laughs> headphones or speakers and I'm just killing your ears right now. But I think that if it was a playoff game, and again, this is this is why I kind of don't care too much about these things anymore because you you make excuses like oh, but if this was a playoff game or if this was Barry Bonds 700 and you know whatever home run, then I wouldn't care. So it's like if I don't care about it now or if i do care about it now but then i make an excuse for why i shouldn't or should care about it later then i guess i'm not really making the best argument but i think that if maybe if it was like one of those bigger moments like a playoff game or like a milestone home run i could you know i could accept it but it's the seventh eighth game of the season you're you're, (laughs) you play for the reds you know i don't know (laughs) oh boy (laughs) <laughs> so so I guess we're we're going to agree to disagree on this one. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking about like I'm thinking about how Ortiz used to pimp his homers or Manny Ramirez or even Yasiel Puig for God's sakes, which is probably why he ended up jumping in, you know, the scrummish or the first guy who came out of the dugout. The guy licks his bat before he hits the ball, and then he hits it and pimps the shit out of it. You know what I mean? And I guess people have an issue with it, but for the most part, like you had said earlier in the show, he still gets commercials, you know what I mean? He still gets celebrated, stuff like that. Yeah. But Dietrich, he hits two home runs, you know, which he'll probably never do in his life ever again, hit two in a single game. And he pimps it, and he gets blasted for it. Okay, but I, I really think that if any other player that you just mentioned, Ortiz, Yasiel Puig, any one of those, if they did what he did, what Dietrich did in that in that first home run, we we'd be sitting here today saying like that was excessive. I really do think that he he just it was it was just unnecessary. I get it though. It it was it was. I don't I don't. Okay, let me start. Let me say this. I don't think Chris Archer should have thrown at him, but I understand why he did it. I'm gonna hit you. I'm gonna hit you with that Chris Rock excuse. <laughs> okay. I I. <laughs> So we were supposed to jump. We were going to talk about some Yankee stuff, but I kind of feel like skipping some of it because we talked a lot about Yankees with our guest, Alfred Alvarez, who's going to come on the show later on. I do want to mention real quick, though, because I found this to be interesting if I didn't throw away my notes because I have notes because I'm a dork. The Yankees <laughs> enter the series against the Baltimore Orioles with eight, eight, home, eight home runs, and they finish the series with 20. And on Sunday, they hit seven of them. They got three from Gary Sanchez, I think two from Clint Frazier, one from Glaber Torres, and one from Austin Romine, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know, man. This if like it's it it was exciting, but at the same time, it scares me a little bit because it kind of feels like if this team doesn't hit a home run, they don't win games. It's yeah, just they they, they was- rely too much on the home run. Yeah, I think before Clint Frazier, by the way, Clint Frazier's on fire. Well, has been for those last couple games. So, I'm happy for him, man. It's yeah. about time they give this guy a chance. He has some really quick bat speed. Kind of that's like what he was. Labor that's Torres. what they, that, you know, it's, I'm glad that you brought that up because when the Yankees 
and I'm going to say this, when the Yankees fleeced, uh, I'm going to say the, the Cubs and the Indians when they traded for, for Clint Frazier, one of the things that people were talking about is how his bat speed is is elite, like on a, on a whole other level. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, why is it taking this guy so long to get called up to the big leagues? Finally, yeah. unfortunately, it takes an injury to a few outfielders for him to get a chance. And I hope that he, I hope that he stays, man. I'm not gonna lie. I know that 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 the Yankees are tied to Aaron Hicks to the tune of you know seven years at ten million a year. But I, you know, I'd rather a young guy who can stay healthy. He was injured last year, but it was more of a concussion thing. It wasn't. Yeah, it was. It was a, yeah, yeah. It was, so I, it was just an unfortunate. Situation. And I just like his style, man. He's cool. on social media. He's interact. He interacts with fans on social media. He's just. He seems like a fun kid. You know what? I mean? What are you gonna do with this guy? Just let him sit yeah. and rot in the minors. Yeah. And that and like at least if you're not gonna if you're gonna send him back to the minors, trade him. Just trade him. Just trade like, him. Let, yeah. let let his career take off, man. Let yeah. let him have the opportunity to be one of the young guys that hits free agency, and you know, like, and it. You, we we were talking to the guy Alfred. Well, I don't know if you're, we're doing that beginning or end, but he was talking about all the stuff that Cuban players go through. But then when you just take when you just step back and look at everything with baseball, like all the shady shit that goes on, what people go through to get there, Clint Frazier situation, he's in the minors. He's pretty much in like he's in a bad situation because he's playing for an organization that doesn't need him to be called up right now. I mean, they do mm-hmm. need him now because Aaron Hicks is injured, like you said. But there's a chance he goes back to the minors. And then, like, we start thinking about, like, the little things, like, should this guy have pimped his home run? Do yeah. we really care that Robinson Cano cheated or anything? You know, like, right. it's just, like, I just feel like you just got to snapshot these things, like, as they're happening and just remember, you know, there's, there's really no, like, black and white in, in, in sports. Um, Damn, man. That was poetic, man. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sweating in my room right now. <laughs> like <laughs> it is hot in here. <laughs> uh, so and and the Yankees, the Yankees are gonna have to. We talked about this with Alfred Alvarez, like you said. Uh, that interview is gonna come at the end of the show, so expect that then. But the Yankees are gonna get to a point when Aaron Hicks is gonna come back. Giancarlo Stanton is gonna come back. You have two first basemen in, in Luke Voigt and uh, Greg Bird. Um. That they're gonna have an overabundance of guys. They have Esteban Floria, who many who many believe is MLB ready already. You're just letting these guys rot. Like if you're if your team is struggling come the trade deadline and you're not making moves for a big arm, if it's available, then people are gonna have to start asking questions. Even though the Yankees are winning games and they made it to the ALCS two years ago, like in record time, they rebuilt their team and all this stuff. You can't, you know, it's not fair to these players, like you said, to just sit and rot down there and not not yeah. get a, a big league opportunity. Um, and it's also not fair to the fans that you're not put, you know, you're not you're fielding a team that's World Series, um, you know, that could potentially win a World Series, but 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 then you're not improving when needed. You know what I mean? Like like if, if Dallas Keiko, which we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna bring it up right now. Dallas Keiko is saying that he's he's willing to lower his his price to $17.9 million, which is the qualifying offer, or a long-term deal worth less money. If you're not making a, an effort to go out and get that guy now, then fans have to start asking questions about Brian Cashman and the Steinbrenners because it's a joke. You're, you're almost like you're almost like tricking us. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I'm being duped here. Like You're, you're giving me this amazing team of guys like Aaron Judge and Gary Sanchez and Gleyber Torres and all these guys, but... We don't, you know, it's not a complete team. There's still holes in there. You need to, and you have the the means to fix those holes. So I want to see at the trade deadline that this team is aggressive at improving this team. And I also want to see this team out there and pushing for Dallas Keiko right now. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, real quick, don't be shocked if Severino doesn't pitch this season, you know, because. I, I'm not, I, I'm yeah. expect at this point, I'm not expecting so, him to. Yeah, and and when the news came out that Severino, you know, had to be shut down for the beginning of the season, I think Brian Cashman said that we're confident with what we have in the minors, right? Whatever. But what about the, you know, what about the guys that you have from your farm system that are already here, like Glaber Torres and Gary Sanchez right. and Aaron Judge? You know, like what about these guys? Like, what you're just gonna experiment with what you have? But like, mm. you're you're in a position where teams dream of being. They have. 
peop, guys that came up through the farm system that are at the superstar level performing, you know, they're they're solid, they're legit. Now you have to build the team around them. And I get they 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 were, they were supposed to have that team and injuries started happening, but there's still options out there. You know, like you have to kind of it's kind of like you I've said this before. It's kind of like you said, why save a closer to the ninth inning when you can use them in the in the seventh or eighth high leverage situations. I feel like these games now, now that the Red Sox aren't winning, these are the games where you kind of have to like, you know, you, you have to win them. What better way to win them than by adding players like a Dallas Keuchel, you know? Mm-hmm. I agree. And and to me, a win in, in April is just as important as a win in October or not October well said. In, in September. Like well said, well said. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, like I don't want to be in a situation where come September 29th, we're one game behind the Boston Red Sox and is a must win or you're going to be a wild card. That's why you need to win games in April. So you're not in that situation. And especially with the record that the, Yan- the not the record, the schedule that the Yankees have coming up and, and that they've had so far. If you're not winning games and you don't deserve that World Series championship and the front office You've done a tremendous job, you know. Like I have to, say, I can't complain as a Yankees fan that you rebuilt this team so quickly. It's fascinating that a lot of our players came from our farm system. It's fascinating, but now you have to take the next step. Now you have to start, uh, you know, adding these pieces to push the team forward. I don't want to keep watching the Red Sox winning World Series after World Series and us sitting here watching them celebrate. Like that, enough of that already. Like we have what it takes to win. Let's do it. Come on, become a Red Sox fan. Never. Never, we, we son. Could, we could use a guy like you. So, CT, next topic, we're going to keep it in the AL East, and then we're going to end it right here. So, Chris Davis, man. I don't know. I don't know if you want to just just talk about this guy for a minute. I don't know. Let, but I, uh, yeah, he's hard. He sucks, first of all. <laughs> I think we all know that. But uh, there was a game the other day. I think it was the game where uh, Judge hit his two home runs. Yeah. I think I don't know. It was one of these games. He came up. Chris Davis came up with the bases loaded. And he had a line drive right at Greg Bird. It would have cleared the bases probably. It was a double. Would have cleared the bases. Uh, it would have put the Orioles ahead. That probably would have been the one bright spot. But yeah, he's besides that, he's complete trash. <laughs> but then again, what are the Orioles playing for? You know. Like yeah, but what are they? <laughs> what I don't are, know. Man. What does it? I, they they can easily just I guess cut him and pay him the money that they owe him. I guess you know, kind of like we did with Pablo Sandoval, the Red Sox. They can easily do that, but again, like what are they playing for? Does it really matter that he sucks or does good? Should people really be mad that he's doing ass? Maybe because maybe there's a guy in the minors that deserves that that spot. But what is that guy in the minors gonna do? Come up and play for a team that's winning 50 games maybe yeah games? he gets he gets big league experience man well what i mean maybe maybe they have a plan maybe they want to hold the guys like that back and bring them all together as a group kind of like uh the braves did you know i don't know i don't know i think you're reaching man and i'm wh- just what's, saying what's I'm just worse saying, what's ahead. worse about this guy is he's 0 and 44 since since early september i think he's currently i don't want to get this wrong uh, so he's been hitless in the last six games as of Saturday, I think it was. I think he played yesterday, so it's seven games now, seven or eight games. The record is 23, so he may not break the record. I wouldn't be shocked if he did, but this is the worst part if you're an Orioles fan. The worst part is that you're tied to this guy until 2037. Why? Because when they extended him to that deal in 2016, which everybody and their mother was saying, why the hell did the Orioles just give Chris Davis, a seven-year, $161 million deal. Um, He's getting 17 mil per season until 2023, which is when the contract expires. After that, they deferred the rest of his contract. So he's going to get $3.5 million from 2023 until 2032. And then from 2033 until 2037, he's going to get $1.4 million. So he's Bobby Bonilla on steroids right now. Like The Orioles are going to feel the ramifications of this terrible contract until the year 2037 to put that in perspective for you guys your one and only me is gonna be 50 if if my math is correct i'll be 53 years old when the baltimore orioles no longer have to pay chris davis again that's crazy well why they paid him that was because he was putting up some pretty beast numbers but he but he 
not not that in 2016 he had a good year, but he was on the decline already. He had been he had been on the decline for a couple of years. Yeah, but wait, decline? I mean, 47 home runs. 30. Is that what he had in 2016? Year? 2016, he had 38. That's I know 47 to 38. But look, Stanton had 60 to 30 something. Do we think Stanton's on the decline? No, but that's different. 59, that there's, 59, there's, 58. There's a transition there. There was a transition from Miami to New York, and, and you know that's that's clear. That's a that's a clear transition. Anybody can understand the drop off uh, in talent. I know that I'm. I know that I sound like I'm making excuses, but in 2016. He hit 221 if we're going with batting average with a 332 batting average. Well, that's after he got the contract. In 2015, yes, he hit 47 home runs. Uh, he struck out 208 times. He had a horrible, you know, it's not like he had an elite on base percentage. It wasn't horrible either. Um, you know, he wasn't he, even. I, he wasn't. If, he, he, he definitely declined, but it. He never he never was an on base percentage guy. He was never a guy that didn't strike out a lot. You know, he always struck out a lot. He had home runs. He was a home run hitter. Uh That's it. he had he's 38. like Adam Dunn. He's like he's like a better ver- he was like a be- better version of Adam Dunn. Uh Adam Dunn was pretty great though. I mean, he he worked a lot of walks too. I so. loved Adam Dunn. But yeah. so, at, at, at one Chris, point to your to your credit, at one point Chris Davis was like in 2013, 2014 and that and that 2016, uh yeah, 2015 he was I mean. He was a good player. I'm not going to take that away from him. But at that point, I remember when he got that contract. I can't, you know, recite any facts or refer you anywhere. But I remember thinking, are these people crazy? Like, No, yeah, I know. I think I thought the contract was pretty crazy, too, for Chris. I remember thinking to myself, like, wow, if Chris Davis got that, then what is the guy like that? You know, I remember thinking that at the time. I agree. The contract was crazy. But 38 home runs in uh 2016, 2017 he missed uh about 30 games, hit 26 home runs. Last year he was ass, like we agree. So so they paid him for home runs essentially. That's it. Yeah, but they're not the only guys to do. I mean, that's what John Carlos Stan got paid for. I think John Carlos Stan is better than Chris Davis. I think so too, but what did he what did he get paid for? His defense? I think he got paid because he was a younger player who he hits can hit runs. for power. I think it's and... home runs, man. And he was a uh, marketable player. And because Jeffrey Loria of the Marlins was a fucking moron. I wouldn't have given uh, Giancarlo Stanton a 13-year deal. That's nuts. No, yeah, I know. I agree, but I'm just saying. That's man, that's just as an albatross contract, and the Yankees are going to regret it later on. But they, you know, if I was the Yankees, I would have made the trade too because it was a, it was a, it was basically a free deal. Like here you go, here's yeah, Giancarlo yeah. for nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> well, and another thing too. I mean probably don't agree with this but bryce harper he got paid for his home runs period i think i think so bryce harper's on another level because bryce harper can actually draw walks more than yeah, yeah. than I davis agree. and and uh and he's only 26 yeah no i agree i i, I know i i'm just there you can't compare all three of these players but yeah no but at, I, the, end I, the, at the end of the day harper harper is getting paid because he hits home runs or I he will hit point. home runs you know i see your point 2037 though can you imagine if i'm gonna use your team can you imagine had when the yankees not the yankees when the red sox signed pablo sandoval and they offered him that deal which i'm not gonna lie i wasn't shitting on them when they when they gave him that deal because he's coming off of a world series he was a marketable player guy that you know people liked a lot he was a good player maybe the deal was a little too much but it wasn't so out of control it was only like three or four years or something it wasn't even like a really long-term deal it was it anyway was a crazy deal it was a crazy deal, but it wasn't like a ten year or six year or seven year. It was like a wasn't it like a five, like a three to five year deal or something like that? It wasn't that crazy. Uh, it wasn't like one of these. Memory, so. okay, how would you feel if the Red Sox had given a guy like Pablo Sandoval a seven year deal and then deferred a lot of the money until the year twenty freaking forty? I'm sure you would have been like, What the fuck, man? <laughs> Well, yeah, but I mean, I I would have been kind of like that, but in a way, isn't that what they did with Max? Scher- isn't that what the Nationals did with Max Scherzer? Like when Max Scherzer signed that deal, could anybody honestly say that was like? No, yeah, a they great took a deal? chance. They yeah, took they a chance. took a chance, and a lot of 100%. his money's deferred too now. So, I don't know, man. It's it's in hindsight, I would have. Yeah, it's it's bad. It's all bad. It's all shit. At the end of the day, Chris Davis is over forty four. <laughs> I think right now the uh, hitless in eight games is, is yeah. Is, yeah. I, I think Baltimore is praying that he goes on a hot streak and they could trade him maybe for like something like a you know like a six round draft pick or something. It's never gonna anything. happen, man. It's never gonna happen. Nobody's gonna take that contract. Yeah, you're right. Nobody's gonna take that contract. 
um, what they're probably hoping for, but they don't want to say it out loud, and I kind of don't want to say it out loud, is that he gets injured or something and insurance pays for it. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, it's, I know it sounds terrible, but like that's best case scenario for this team. I know that sounds horrible, but or maybe he has some natural like David Wright back issue or something that he's not allowed to play and he has to he's forced to retire and he gets that Damn. money on the back end. It comes off it comes off of the salary cap. Just trade him to but, the Yankees. Yo, the, the Baltimore Orioles until 2023 will have 17 million dollars attached to their payroll. After that, they're going to be paying him minimal. It's only 3 million for like 10 years and then 1 million. For a baseball team that's not a lot of money. But think about how Met fans they, they, I mean, every year they, you know, people celebrate Bobby Bonilla Day, the day that the the yeah, Mets yeah, have yeah. to give <laughs> have to give Bobby Bonilla, I think, like one point two five million dollars. The Orioles are going to be in the same situation. It's crazy how these teams don't learn from shit like this. Yeah, I don't know, man, but we're 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 just we just eat it up. We're just the fans. We just keep accepting it and. At this point, I know that it. You know, I know that Chris Davis doesn't want to go down in history as the guy with the hitless streak or the most consecutive games without a hit. But at this point, I want it to happen because it would be something unique to see in baseball, and I'm a selfish <laughs> bastard. And, yeah, no, that's I, all I have to say. Me me personally, I don't ever want to see anyone be this bad at their profession. You know, like, I don't – I, I I pray Chris Davis hits, like, a grand slam and, and then – And he some. will. Not against, not against the Red Sox. He will, because when he connects, the ball flies. He hits. He still hits the ball hard. It's just, it's either a run of really bad luck, which I don't think that's what it is, because in in uh, in 2014 he played 127 games and hit 196. That must that should have been a little preview for that team. Like, who's the real Chris <laughs> Davis? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I don't know, man. It's yeah, know. I, I agree, but yeah, you're right. I remember when he signed that deal, and I and I just kept thinking like, wow, baseball's crazy. Like, what's what's Trout gonna get when he hits the you know all this stuff? So yeah, man. insane. All right, CT, that was a good show, a, a long one, but a good one. That's what she said. <laughs> all right, so here's what else you need to know in the world of baseball. Mike Trout hits five home runs over four consecutive games. Is this guy a man or a machine? I have no idea. The AL player of the week is, you guessed it, Mike Trout. He had four home runs this past week with a 448 average. That's not right, is it? Yes, it is. No, that's yeah. not right. The NL player of the week, that, that those are Cody Bellinger stats. I don't know why I mixed them up. But Mike Trout's stats were five home runs, a 389 batting average, 633 on base, and a 1222 slugging in the American League. Cody Bellinger was the player of the week in the National League. He had four home runs with a f- – I did that wrong again, didn't I? No, yeah, four home runs yeah, with a 448 yeah. average, a 484 on base, and a 1,000 slugging. So, Cody Bellinger and Mike Trout, your players of the week. CT, I want to ask you one last question, and then we'll sign off. I offered a trade to Gus on the Fantasy League. And and while I'm looking this up, I just want to tell you that Andrew... I'm dropping names on this shit now. I don't care. All right. Uh, you guys can find Andrew. He lives in Harrison. If you want to take him out or something, you want to... <laughs> anyway so he offered me mookie bets on a deal and then fucking took it away so i didn't get a chance yeah. to see i saw mookie bets i got all excited i looked at the app and it was gone i uh yeah I, what, what was the question sorry here's the question i got it i offered gus kike hernandez who's raking to start the years for jameson talion how do you feel about that i ooh, jameson you... talion day to day just got the notification so you might want to pull that one back would you veto? Got, would you veto? No, nah, he's not. I got the notification too. He's fine. He's gonna pitch on I, Saturday. Would I veto? No, because James James Italian, like he, I remember when he came into the league and he was this highly touted uh, prospect, but he just has never really hit that streak of like consecutive starts where he's just dominating. So no, I wouldn't veto that. But I also don't think that's a trade that he would accept. I was actually gonna offer him a better deal for James Italian. Mm, do you want to reveal that here on on the record? Uh, no, but I will say this: I was <laughs> I was with I was with the boys last night, and by the boys, I mean, you know, four members of our fantasy league. We were all watching some baseball games, and Mookie Betts is looking. Uh, what's it called? The uh, the Green Monsters are looking to move Mookie Betts. Man, it was a talk. There was talks of that. So I can't believe that, man. Yeah, I guess. I'm gonna. 
So I, I actually fleeced Andrew on a trade a couple years ago, and then I fucked up because I traded the player that he gave me. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so next week, we're going to have a show with the guys of the Fantasy League. So look look forward to that. These guys are shit, talk, shit talkers extraordinaires. And um, yeah, so look, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fun. So that's all I got for you guys today. CT, you got anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, if you're into premier matchups, Mike Trout versus Christian Yelich today. So nice. And today oh, he well, means yesterday. Yeah, that was a pointless statement. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep it. Mike Trout, <laughs> Mike Trout versus Chris, Mike Trout versus uh, Christian Yelich tomorrow too, because in baseball we play back to back games in three game series and stuff. That's so. a good point. It's an excellent there point, man. <laughs> All right. As I said earlier in the show, the Welcome to the Show podcast is powered by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show to get a free audiobook download and a 30 day free trial. That's audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show. And for more exclusive deals, like getting a month of hymns for just $5 the first month, go to wttspod.com forward slash save. That's WTTS pod forward slash save there. You'll also find 10% off of KD custom kicks for guys like Aaron judge, get their custom sneakers and cleats. You can also get 10% off of programs like top velocity. If you're a kid who's playing baseball, you want to improve the speed of your fastball, check out top velocity. Our music is by VM Varga and rap Turtle music by naughty productions. Our logo is by Luigi Gomez. I'm Manny Gomez. Peace. Peace.